to be in the house of the Lord one more again. Amen. Uh, we want to begin our uh, study on tonight. We are in the New Testament. We began the New Testament on last week. We are in the book of Colossians, the book of Colossians chapter number one, numero uno, Colossians chapter number one. And in the book of Colossians, we are talking about the head of the church, which is Christ. In the book of Ephesians, uh, we were talking about the body uh, of Christ, which is the church. And so we are talking and focusing Paul in his letter to the saints in Colossae on Christ and who he is in uh, our lives. It's very important that we recognize who he is uh, in our very lives. Amen, somebody, amen. All right, so I think we uh, concluded somewhere around verse uh, number seven on last week, and so we want to go from there. Uh, Colossians chapter one, verse number seven. Listen to your Bible. As uh, you also learn from Epaphras, our dear uh, fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also uh, declared to us your love in the spirit for this reason. All right, so in verse number three, uh, Paul says, we give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, why? Verse four, since we heard of your faith uh, in Christ Jesus and of your love, uh, for all the same, because of the hope uh, which is laid up for you in heaven, uh, of which you heard before uh, in the word, uh, in the word of the uh, fruit of uh, the gospel, a amen, uh, which has come to you as it has uh, also in all the world. And so one of the things we were saying last time is that the gospel had went around the whole world uh, in one generation, last time we were talking about the gospel, and we were making comparisons uh, between the tools that we have in this day and how we can reach out to folk we have never met, never seen before, um, through the use of technology and internet and all those kinds of things, uh, but how uh, Paul had to uh, beat the pavement uh, traveling from one city to another city all over. And here we are uh, with more benefits uh, and yet less results in terms of uh, fulfilling the great commission to go into all the world. And so that's one of the um, one of the admonitions, I think, for the church is that we can sure enough do better when we look at our forefathers in the gospel and what they had to endure compared to us today. I, I mean, you can send a text from here to California and go right back to bed just that fast, you know. Uh, and so we have to be willing to use uh, what we have all means uh, to reach uh, others for the cause uh, of Christ. And so we talked about that. Drop down to verse number 23. Let me get a read of verse 23. Uh, Colossians 1 and verse number 23. What does your Bible read? If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, All right, so Paul said, the gospel which you heard, saints in Colossae, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Just reiterating the fact that the gospel had gone throughout all the known world at that then time. And so we get down to verse number nine for this reason. Yes, sir. Oh, I just want to comment on that. Yes, sir. About the world, going around the world, just on last night. <laughs> we have people from Aruba, uh, New York. Yes, sir. Arabians. Yes. So, you know, they are, they are that, that, that's a beautiful illustration. I'm glad you brought that up. And, and as Brother Ricky mentioned, we have our sweet hour of prayer every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, and as he mentioned, I don't know if those on uh, Facebook caught that, but we had folk from Aruba, the Caribbean, uh, and from New York and, and, and all over the place uh, just tuning in and being blessed with us. And so while we're in separate places, we can be uh, in the same place uh, in heart and mind and in spirit. So uh, we've got to be creative in how we fulfill God's command uh, to go into all the world. And so a lot of times uh, people want folk to come, but God has commissioned us to go. And so it's very important uh, that we fulfill that commission. Uh, go ye means go me. 
Uh, all right, now, in verse number 9, for this reason, since we also, uh, we also, since the day we heard it, did not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge. We talked about that. We looked at Proverbs 1 and 7. It lets us know that, uh, amen, uh, uh, it talks about spiritual wisdom uh, and how fools uh, despise wisdom. Uh, Proverbs chapter number 1 and verse number 7. Yeah, that's right. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And, and so it is Paul's prayer, Colossians 1 and 9, that we, the, ch the church, be filled, uh, he says, uh, with the knowledge of his will. How many of you feel like you're filled with the knowledge of his will? How many of you feel like you're learning more and more? Amen. How many of you actually did your homework from last week, which you didn't think I was going to ask you about? Amen. All right. Uh, last week we were talking, Sister Shirley, uh, about uh, remembering or, or learning uh, each day one thing that you have not learned uh, in the Holy Writ of God's Word. Who did your homework? Any, any? All right, Justin, what did you learn? Yeah, yeah, amen, somebody. Praise you, the Lord. There's a whole lot to learn in God's Word if we have the appetite to learn from God's Word. And when you're talking about uh, learning something that maybe you haven't known, you can just flip the Bible open to any passage, and you will find some information, some nuggets of truth uh, that can bless you along uh, the way. So one of the tasks of the child of God, he says, to be filled with the knowledge of uh, the Bible says, of God's will, and we dis discover God's will in God's engrafted word. Uh, and then he says, amen, in all wisdom and what? Spiritual understanding. Is there a difference? Yes. There, there are difference in the types of understanding? Is, is there a difference? Oh, yeah. Do people out in the world think like those in the church? And if not, why not? Do, do, we, do we think different than folk in the world? Yes. Why do we think different than folk in the world? The mind, we know the, word. the mind of Christ, filled with the knowledge of God's word. When you look over there in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, uh, and you drop down there to verse number 11. Uh, listen to your Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And verse number 11, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? We all have a spirit. Even so, no one knows the things of God except what? Spirit. The spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, contrast, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God, these things which we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, doing what? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's different. You know, and that's one of the problems that the saints had in, in Corinth. Uh, when you look down in chapter number 3 and verse number 1, and I brethren could not speak to you how so? As to spiritual people but as to carnal as to what? Babes, Babes in Christ. Fed you with milk not with solid word, food, food for until now you were not able to receive it even now you're still not able here is an example of a carnal minded individual, worldly minded. For you are still carnal, verse 3, for where there are what? Envy, strife, divisions among you. Are you not carnal and behaving how so? Like mere men. So we get an elevated knowledge through the word of God about how to live this life, navigate this life, do those things that are well pleasing in God's sight. Uh, and, and it enriches our lives and it impacts other people's lives when you learn how to forgive, when you learn how to give, when you learn how to, uh, amen, 
uh, uh, let things go and all of that kind of stuff. So we get a spiritual understanding. And a lot of times people see things from a worldly perspective, but the child of God has to be careful not to dawn on uh, the perspective of the world because we have the will of God. And so we should be thinking about the same world uh, that we're living in, but from a different perspective, and that perspective is through the lens of God's engrafted word. So Amen. we want to compare spiritual things with spiritual. We don't want to see things the same way that the world sees things uh, because we've been enlightened through the word of God. Is, is that your hand? Yeah, I was talking yes, sir. A relative of mine, he was arguing that somebody had done him wrong, mm -hmm. and he wanted to retaliate. I said, well, you believe in Jesus Christ, yeah? I said, well, and you believe he died on the cross, yeah? And I said, you see him retaliate? No. I said, okay. I'm done with my conversation. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Help him have the mind of Christ. Right. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, uh, when, you, when you're calm-minded, you know, somebody did you wrong, well, then they got to pay, yeah. you know? Uh, but what God does is he stops uh, the payment process by absorbing the cost himself. Uh, so I'm going to forgive you and not hold you accountable to it. It's going to be all right. It's going to stop with me. Uh, and so a lot of times, you know, people uh, add more logs to the fire. You know, somebody do something to them, they do it to them, and they do it that, and it goes back and forth. Uh, and then it, it, it catches like a wildfire. But what God says is the way you stop the fire is to absorb it and forgive and, and move on. And, and so that's very important for us to understand uh, how forgiveness uh, brings about peace. Uh, amen. So it brings light in a dark world. And so, but that's spiritual mind. Um, a lot of times, I was talking with a sister today, uh, we operate on feeling as opposed to faith. Uh, and so uh, we have to trust that God's will uh, for our lives, dealing with this situation is the best solution for dealing with the situation. A lot of times we don't like God's solution because it doesn't feel good. But we are to walk or to live by faith and simply <laughs> trusting that this is the right thing to do irrespective of how I feel about what has transpired. Any of that make some sense? Okay. Um, let's look at Colossians chapter number 1. Uh, one more again. Appreciate that perspective, brother. That uh, helps us. Yes, sir. But the Lord, uh, the first chapter 2, verse 14, I think that's it. Go ahead and read that, brother. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's it. That's it. Doesn't make no sense to them. Right. Doesn't make no sense to them. And so, you know, when you talk about forgiveness, you got to be kidding. You see what they did? Talk about forgiveness, well, you know how much money they owe me? You know, all of that kind of stuff. And so, there's a difference between how we should think, spiritual-minded, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and carnal-minded um, folk out in the world, and sometimes the church, when we fail to uh, be led by the Spirit. You know, oftentimes, uh, we quench the Spirit. We know what we should do, but we ain't feeling it. And so instead of walking by faith, we're walking by feeling. Yeah. And when you walk by feeling, you're going in the wrong direction. That's yeah. when you really need to pray fast and everything else. Uh, and so uh, sometimes what's right don't feel good, but it doesn't change the fact that it's right. And we have to learn to accept what is right uh, and to simply do God's will. Uh, and, 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 and you tell folk uh, all the time, well, I tell here's, here's one of the things we have to understand. Uh, when it comes to forgiveness, don't wait to forgive. Uh, okay, let me put it this way. When it comes to forgiveness, don't wait until you feel better to forgive. Gotcha. You know, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. I know I'm supposed to forgive, but I ain't feeling it right now. And, and, and when I get better, when I feel better, then we'll talk a little bit about that forgiveness. See? Uh, amen. We are supposed to do the will of God, right? Uh, and, and then in time, you, you feel better about doing the right thing. But if you operate on feeling, then you won't do what's right until you feel better. Uh, and in the meantime, God comes back and says, hey, what's going on about that? So we got to learn how to do the will of God uh, irrespective to how we feel 
because we know what's right. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that the challenge?
She slapped me. I forgive her, and you mad because I forgave her. <laughs> I'm the one that got offended, and I forgive her. That, that, that's my business to forgive her. What I find is very interesting is when people have gone to prison for 40 some odd years, unjustly, I ain't mad at nobody. I've let it go. I ain't got no problem with it. Man, you just took 40 years of my life. I'm mad at everybody. You know, where's my check? And what I can't get back because y'all stole my youth, you stole my vitality, you stole, and, and I'm going to get out of prison and do what? Uh, all right, so what we have to recognize is that people who have been in that situation have consistently, not listen to them things, yeah, yeah, you better, and yeah, I've forgiven. I, I don't have no business on nobody. And I just sit there and watch the news, and I'm sitting there thinking, really? Really? Wow. Next thing come on, somebody else, 37 years? Yeah, I'm just glad to be out. And, you know, but in order for us to live, we have to forgive. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Sister, what I was mentioning, uh, in another congregation, we had an issue. I'm kind of off the cuff sometimes, you know. I got you. I, I jump off somewhere, not knowing that I may be injured. Look for you, back. Come back to me. You, yeah. you, boo, boo, what? I said, let me go get another sister to come up here and touch her. Me at this thing. Sister, come up here, strong sister. And she had. And she got outside. I still ain't forgive you. Here he goes, two years, three days later, I'm lying down 52. I see, oh, that was just a car broke down. Hey, she hide me face. Don't, but she saw the thing. I took her to the top. <laughs> what can I do for you? I don't know. My dad's knee ran back. I said, good, let's go. What are you going to do? Get in. Lock the door. I walked there. I ain't got no gas can. I said, I want $7. I said, I need the $7. Sir, so it's close to the gas. When I come back, you tell me, I sure didn't believe you. Don't do that for me. We're the best of friends right now. Amen. You can prove sometime in your chance. It can only take place when there's a reconciliation of the relationship, which means that somebody is going to have to put out the fire. You know, somebody might have to put out the fire. Otherwise, there's going to be a fire, a burn the relationship, and, and you you think that you're hurting them because you mad, you know, and you hurting yourself in terms of your relationship with God and trying to be right, doing wrong, and justifying the wrong. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Now, uh, let me let me chime in on that. Um, you don't have to turn there. You can if you like. But if you all remember in Matthew 20, it talks about the laborers in the vineyard. Yes, sir. All right. Some came. They were called by the owner of the vineyard. Come work in my left. Uh, at, at the third hour, the sixth hour, the ninth hour, the eleventh hour. All right. So, and, and, and others that came earlier. Third hour, mad because you got the same thing as other folk that came in the ninth hour and we break the, the heat of the day. And you mean we're going to get the same pain? Listen, there's a season for all of us. Just because you came early in life does not mean that you should, that, that, that I should not get my reward for coming to Christ as well. Yeah, so, okay, so here's my point. If I come later on in life, the ninth hour, the eleventh hour of life, after midlife, there's so much stuff that I have to unlearn. There's so much stuff 
that I'm going to be struggling with the rest of my life because I spent so long learning things, practicing things that were not right. Amen. And it takes time to get some of this stuff out of your system. Now, if you come to the Lord and you're 15 years old, by the time you're 40, you ought to be doing, you know, <laughs> you've been faithful, you, you, you ought to be able to deal with this some stuff. And then you got the nerve to turn somebody up. All, all you got to do is forgive. Well, you've been doing this thing for the last 30 years. I'm a new babe in Christ. I just showed up here. Uh, you know, I'm not new in this world, you know. And, and so there's a whole lot of stuff that I've got to unlearn. There's a whole lot of stuff that I've got to recalibrate my thinking, you know. Uh, set your mind on things ab above, you know. Uh, I did not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind, and that takes time, Amen. you know. Uh, and so that's why we have to be patient with other folk. Yes, sir. And, and we feel like because maybe I got something down pat that you should just get it just like that. And what's the problem with you? There's one thing learning and another thing practicing, you know. Um, and you really learn when you're able uh, to do um, what uh, you're supposed to do. So anyway, those, those are some things there. Boy, forgiveness. Boy, evidently, I'm a, Brother Coon, deal with that forgiveness when your time comes. Uh, apparently, we need to deal with, you know, we really do need to deal with that because that's an everyday uh, occurrence. Every day. Every day somebody rubbing you wrong. Some of y'all sitting here thinking right now, you know what, I really got to let that thing go. <laughs> you know, and yes, uh, and for those folk that do not come to Bible study, you know what they're doing? The same thing they've always been doing. If you're in Bible study, then we have an opportunity to sow a good seed of the word in your heart to help you deal with what you're dealing with. But when you're not there, you are missing. You're not only missing in person, but you're missing your blessing. So that's why, again, it's important for us uh, to be faithful uh, in uh, the assembling of the saints to God because you're always going to get a blessing. When you're not there, you're missing your blessing. Uh, all right, um, back to Colossians. Oh, snap. Let me get my timekeeper here. I got an agenda. Okay, now, um, verse 10. Spiritual understanding, that's where we left off, verse 9. Verse 10. Uh, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. All right. Uh, our task is to walk worthy. Uh, of course, we talked, I think, last week, Ephesians 4, uh, verse number 1, where it talked about uh, walking worthy. Let me get somebody to get Ephesians 4, verse number 1. Uh, and then Paul breaks down what it means to walk worthy. And some of this we were discussing last week. Uh, well, what do you mean, walk worthy uh, of the Lord, fully pleasing him? And then he breaks down what that means. Uh, one of the things we discuss is being fruitful. Being fruitful, bearing fruits, uh, all right? Uh, and the other one, in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So walking worthy means to be fruitful, uh, being about your father's business. We touched on that. Um, uh, increasing in what? The knowledge of God. That's what your homework was all about. Um, also being strengthened with all might. Who has Ephesians 4, verse number 1? Okay, so Paul says, I, I'm begging you, I beseech you, to walk worthy of the what? Vocation or the calling with which you were called, all right? So the child of God, we have a job, you know, uh, to fully please the Lord. Jesus, uh, as a young boy, he was about his father's business. You and I need to do what? Be about our father's business. So uh, in walking worthy, we're talking about being fruitful in walking worthy. We're talking about increasing in the knowledge. It is vital that we grow. It's not optional. Uh, it is of necessity, and God expects us to grow. Then he says, study to show thyself approved. Second Timothy, what, 2.15? Uh, okay. Um, and then he says, strengthen with all might. How is it that we are strengthened? How do we get strengthened? With the word, okay, okay, thank you, sir. Going through trials, Going through trials. that'll strengthen you on it. Yeah. Praying. Praying, 
That'll strengthen you, right? Asking God for strength. Turn to Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 16. Ephesians 3 and verse 16. Listen to your Bible. That he, that is God, uh, would grant you according to the riches of his glory uh, to be what? Strengthened. Strengthened with might through what? His spirit in where? The inner, the inner man. That Christ may dwell where? In your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, depth, height to know the what? Love of Christ uh, which passes uh, love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the what? Fullness of God. All right. So, so this this strengthen uh, to be strengthened with might in the Holy Spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts uh, through faith. What happens is we quench the Spirit. We quench the Spirit. Holy Spirit directing us. The love of God, what we should do. I'm a child of God. I'm not going to live the way I used to live. But now I got a situation, and I'm not quite sure how to deal with it as a Christian, but I know how I dealt with it when I wasn't a Christian. And so you go to your default position. But what we have to do is we have to stay in the Word. That's why we have to grow in the Word, in the knowledge of this Word, so that we might learn how to deal with similar situations, but in a different way. Uh, in a different way because we are different now. We're a child of God. So it is not optional that we grow in the knowledge. You are never going to be the best Christian that you can be if you don't learn. If you don't increase in the knowledge of God's word, strengthen in the inner man uh, through his Holy Spirit. All right. And then verse number 11, Colossians 1, uh, with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. When we say patience and long suffering with joy, come on Christians with that spiritual understanding, what comes to your mind? Patience with all long suffering with joy. What comes to your mind, spiritual minded people? What comes to your mind? Okay. Okay. Uh, turn to James chapter 1 verse 2. James chapter 1 verse 2 and verse number 3. Let me get this read. I'm coming right to you. Okay. Uh, I said verse 3. All right. How about verse 2 and 3? My brethren, count it all joy when, not if, you fall in what? Various trials, that was what Brother Kuhn was saying earlier, knowing that the what? Testing of your faith produces what? Patience. Does that sound, does that sound familiar? Okay. So part of walking worthy, uh, we learn in Colossians uh, 1, uh, verse number 10, is being fruitful, being about your father's business. Uh, he also says, uh, increasing in the knowledge, amen. Uh, being strengthened with all might. Uh, and then he said, for all patience and long suffering with joy. Uh, all right? So you gotta, you get patience, uh, the Bible says, through the testing of your faith, because it's the testing of your faith that produces that patience. Uh, all right? So, so, you know, it's not enough to learn the word of God. At some point, we have to apply it. And life being that, uh, that battlefield, that testing or proving ground will test your faith. Amen. How many of you get tested in this life? Amen. So, I mean, uh, imagine studying the Word of God but having no test. I'm a great Christian. I'm a wonderful Christian. How do you know? When you get tested, you start cussing somebody out, you find out you didn't pass the test. You find out you're not as good a Christian as you thought. You find out you can't even spell Christian. <laughs> All right. So, so it's very important, church, <laughs> that we grow and these tests are designed to help us. Give me a little test. 
you know, fail it a couple times by passing the test and then that same test coming and pass that test again. Oh, I'm doing good. And then you got a bigger test, right? And, and you start crying about a bigger test, but you got to remember the other test. And God brought you through that test, and now you got a big test. You keep trying to climb. You're too short to climb. Your little legs climb. You keep jumping. You finally get up on the next step. Oh, boy, I'm doing all right. Then you got a bigger test, right? Uh, and God is going to test your metal. See, some of you, okay, I'm coming. The sin that so easily besets you, right? Yes, How many of y'all know what that is in your particular individual life? Yeah, okay, fine, fine, fine. So you know what that is. Okay, I got to stop this. I got to stop that, right? Uh, and you think that's your only problem. You think, <laughs> many of you think that's really your only challenge until you're tested in an area that you have not been tested in before. Amen. Oh, man, you come into some money. Woo. I ain't seen y'all this Sunday. <laughs> Next Sunday, the Sunday after, everything, you know, all this kind of stuff. You know, see, some things you don't know what you deal with until you are tested. Yes, sir. I ain't got no problem with that. I ain't got no problem with that. I'm good. My problem is that. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Until you get tested with this. Then you find out you got more than that. You got that and this and, you know, how the young folks say, this, that, and the third. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brother Kuhn, I come, brother. Uh, yeah, it reminds me, you ever heard the term uh, book smart? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are, you know, book smart. But they, they, they can't apply it. And I was in the nuclear Navy, and we had a black guy that was book smart. But when they had to go out there and uh, But one of the things is apparent 
That old dude, Tyson Fury, that's a big oak, uh, oak tree there. Yeah. He got knocked down two times. But the guy wouldn't stay down. He kept getting up. And that's what the child of God has to do. In this battlefield called the world, you will get knocked down. As Brother um, what's your name? Jones says, that what you have to do, what you have to do is you have to keep getting up. That's what you have to keep doing. Part of Long says you got to keep getting up. Yes, you're going to get knocked down, but you got to keep getting up. And the only way you can keep getting up is to never what? Give up. Never give up. And that's very important. Hey, amen, somebody? Amen. All right. How are we doing on time? Ten minutes. Ten? Boy, I can do a lot in ten minutes. Good. All right. Now, uh, let's look at verse number 12. Verse number 12. Verse number 12. Uh, give it thanks to the Father. Thank God, yeah. the Father. Praise the Lord. Who has qualified us. And we talked about this. God doesn't call the qualified, but he qualifies those that are called qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance. Child of God, we have an inheritance. The inheritance of who? The saints in the light. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians chapter number 1, uh, verse number 3. Uh, listen to your Bible. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has uh, blessed us. So in verse number 3, we see bless us. Verse 4, we see he chose us. Verse 5, he predestined us. And verse 6, he made us accepted in the beloved. This is what God had done. He has blessed us, verse 3, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he what? Chose us. Y'all can help me if you like. Chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame in him uh, in uh, love, having what? Okay, so chose, uh, uh, blessed us, chose us, and now predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory, verse number six, uh, of his grace, by which he what? Made us, Made us what? Acceptable in the blood. So God doesn't call the qualified, but he qualified those that, it, that he have called. And so God has uh, blessed us, chose us, uh, predestined us, uh, and made us acceptable, amen, in the beloved. So that, that's a blessing. So when we go to Colossians chapter 1, uh, in verse number 12, giving thanks. we got a lot to thank God for. We got to thank God. He has blessed us, chose us, predestined us, and made us acceptable in the beloved. Giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance. Oh, we got a little something, praise the Lord, of the saints and the light. Uh, he has, not only that, but God has delivered us. Praise God. Thank you. He has delivered us. What has he delivered us from? He has delivered us from the power of darkness. God delivered us from Satan's domain. Amen. That's what we were, in Satan's domain. Happy, having a good time, but in Satan's domain. And so he has delivered us from the power of darkness, the Bible says, and conveyed or translated us into, you went from one department to another, into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Amen. The Son of His love amen. is Christ. The kingdom is the church. And, and so, uh, amen, He has conveyed us into the church of Christ. Amen. Is there a church in here? Amen. Verse 14, in whom we have what? Redemption. Amen. Uh, redemption, we're talking about uh, delivered uh, at a purchase price. So we have been redeemed. We have uh, been delivered. And, and the way that God has delivered us, he has paid a price, uh, a bribe, if you will. Uh, he has paid the ransom, if you will. Something had to be paid. We have been redeemed. Uh, all right. Uh, and so he says, in whom we have redemption. What type of redemption? Redemption through his what? Blood. Through his blood. Uh, the forgiveness of sin. Now, we love to be forgiven. Yeah. But I don't know about forgiving. <laughs> Amen. There's the forgiven, then there's the forgiving. Uh, all right. Now, 1 Peter 3 and verse number 7. 
Uh, I think that's 1 Peter 3 and 7. Let me see what we got here. Uh, 1 Peter 3 and verse number 7. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, is that where I'm at? Where am I? Uh, I am looking. Well, I must be I'm looking at the wrong passage. Uh, uh, 1 Peter 1 and 18. 18 and 19. Uh, knowing, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. Uh, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. You are not redeemed with currency of man's devising. You know, Amen. the almighty dollar, that sort of thing. Uh, silver or gold. Um, uh, from your aimless conduct received by the tradition uh, uh, from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. The currency for your redemption is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus had to die that we might live. live. All right. So that's that's important for us uh, to understand. So we've been redeemed at a high cost. All right. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody had to pay the price. Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And that life is where? In Christ Jesus, all right? So, in whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, all right? He is, talking about Christ, the image of the invisible God. Yes, sir. And so Jesus is um, the representative of God in visible form, yes. in human form. Came on and dawned on flesh that we might understand God at a level that we can comprehend him. So he had to come in something that we can understand. Uh, all right. So Jesus is um, the express image or the image of the invisible uh, God. Uh, all right. Um, Nah, that's good. Uh, all right, uh, God, and then he's at the firstborn over uh, creation. Now, let's look at that image a little bit further. Uh, quickly, we need some readers. Hebrews 1 and 3, Hebrews 1 and 3, uh, John 14 and 9. John, you got John 14 and 9? All right, uh, all right Monique, you got Hebrews 1 and 3? Nick got a got a mask on. I can still see her cutting her eye. All right, all right. <laughs> hey, hey, man, no, she did good. Let me get somebody to get uh, Romans eight and twenty nine. Romans eight and twenty nine, and that's that's good. That's good. He is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. All, all right. Now in John one and verse number. Well, okay, I'll just wait for y'all then. So, yeah, okay. Uh, what's, what's the first one, John? John, you got yours? I got John 14 and 9. That's good. Yeah, I was going to read another one, but go ahead. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me? Look, he who has seen me, Jesus has seen the Father. So, how can you say, Show us the Father? Now, all right, he who has uh, seen me has seen the Father. Uh -huh. So, how can you say, Show us the Father. So here's Philip, three years with Jesus. Show us the Father. Oh, remedial class. How long have we been together? How long have we been together and you haven't seen the Father? Uh, all right. So we need to really understand who Jesus is. Quick, simple. He is the image of the invisible God. Uh, all right. Uh, next passage, Sister Monique. Hebrews 1 and 3. Uh, okay, that's three. Yeah. And, and verse four should talk about worshiping angels, right? Sure. Having become so much better, better than the angels, as he has by himself suffered death, even death on the cross. Uh, all right, that's good. All right, so Jesus um, is God, and the worlds were created 
uh, by him, and nothing was made that was made without him. Mm -hmm. Ain't that awesome? Mm -hmm. So creation was created by Christ. Now, you wonder why he's able to walk on water? He made the water. You know why he's able to calm the storms in your life? The amen, them storms ain't got nothing on God. Everything that exists is because he created. Amen. Amen. So that's important. I guess somebody else something else? Yeah. What? Who got that? Yeah, you got that? Who got that? So God predestined that the child of God be conformed into the image of his son. Yes, and his son is the express image of God himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that's good. John chapter 1, uh, John chapter 1, round verse number 3. John 1 and, uh, okay, verse number 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Yeah. He was in the beginning with God. All things were what? Made through, made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. Oh, everything came through the sun. Isn't that something? Oh, that's some deep stuff. Now, it's important that we understand that Christ was not created. He's God. Always been God. Didn't get created by God so that we can understand God. He is God. Uh, all right. So that's something that we have to understand. Uh, and he's going to talk about that in a little bit. How am I doing? Is that cut? Oh, I'm about to get warmed up. I got one minute. John chapter number uh, 17. John chapter number 17, Brother John. John chapter 17. And verse number 1 and following. John 17, 1 and following. Listen to your Bible. Jesus spoke these words. Uh, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him and this is eternal life. What is eternal life? That they may know you. And that's eternity. Relationship with God, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself. How so? With the glory which I had with you before the world was. Oh, man. Well, that's some awesome stuff. Now, you commissioned me. You told me I got a work to do. I created the stuff. I came in the flesh. I've done the ministry. I'm about to go back. Glorify me with the glory. Give me that glory that I had with you even before the world was. Ooh, God is just too awesome. Yes, sir. Let me tell you how awesome he is as we close because we out of time. Captain Kirk. Went up on that blue, that blue rocket. Went on up there, Captain Kirk. Who else should go up there, Captain Kirk? So he went on up there, came back down, just a crime. Yes, sir. It was so beautiful. I hope this feeling never leaves me. <laughs> if he crying being up in a rocket ship for 10 minutes looking at the glory of God yeah. and amen, uh, just looking through the window, yeah. floating every now and then for a second or two before he had to come down, coming down to my <laughs> man, what's heaven going to be like? What's heaven gonna be like? Right. Right. Amen. When you when you when you step out of this world, when God, uh, uh, okay, I'm finished. Bye, y'all. <laughs>